In this video, I want to take a look at the effect of a forcing function on a vibrating system. In particular, we're going to be looking at a wave propagating along a spring here. So the situation that I have is I've got this spring under tension, and I'm going to apply a force here. I think I've got to turn it on first. I want to just apply a small pulse to it. And it sends a wave down, and the wave reflects off one end and comes back. And with the settings right here, you can see I have no damping. So this wave will continue to go back and forth forever. Now it has, because of the tension of the spring, it has a particular length of time it takes to propagate back and forth, and I find myself swaying to it. Um, we could measure how long it takes. I have a stopwatch here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually measure 10 times back and forth so that then we can divide by 10. I think we get a better accuracy as to how long each one takes. So you ready? Next time around. Here we go. Ready, set, go. nine and ten okay so it's right at about 24 seconds to do 10 vibrations which would be how many so divide by 10 that would be one time back and forth is 2.4 seconds so one cycle is in 2.4 seconds that means the frequency is 1 divided by 2.4 cycles per second, which is about 0.42. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to switch to oscillate here. Oops, stop. I'm going to restart this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in a forcing function. That is, I'm going to be waving this thing back and up and down, um, with the same amplitude. That wasn't a very big jolt that we put before, but I'm going to just keep putting that jolt in again and again. And I'm going to do it at a frequency uh, equal to the frequency of what it takes to go... Uh, actually, no, I'm going to start by doing it at some random frequency uh, here um, and say, all right, let's, let's let this go and see what happens. So the wave wants to go back and forth, and I'm just continually putting in another wave to add on top of itself, and it, it builds up a little bit, but then it kind of peters out. Oh, actually, there it stopped completely. Right? So that's just some random frequency. Let me pause this and restart it at the value that I want of 0.42. Two. Actually, let's just be cl close to 0.42. Let's be like 0.4, uh, 0.5 here. Let's see what happens here when I'm when I'm close. And go. So this, yeah, it built up a little, but again, it's it's petering out. Let's try a little closer. 0.4. Six. We start this thing. Go. Now 0.46. I think you can see right away that I get a bigger response. I get more, uh, more amplitude in the wave that's that's happening. But then it seems to be dying off again. So we get an increased amplitude, and then a decreased amplitude, and then and it should build back up again. And we get these, what I would call beats. We get this, this increasing amplitude and decreasing amplitude, and increasing amplitude and decreasing amplitude. Let's get closer to 0.42. Actually, let's go to 0.42. And restart it and say, go. Now at this point, I'm sending a wave down there in exactly the amount of time that it takes for the wave to go down and come back. So the first wave goes down and comes back, and at the same time, then it sends the second wave down as the first one is being reflected backwards. What happens is this just keeps building up higher and higher amplitudes. Um, this is what's called resonance. 
that the frequency that I'm my forcing function is at is the same frequency that the spring system itself wants to vibrate. And what happens is you get resonance. This just keeps building higher and higher and higher frequency. We will look at the math of this in another video. But I also want to say that this phenomenon happens um, in other places besides springs. Um, you can see it in, um, there's a place up in Alaska called Ptarmigan Arm, Arm, a little south of Anchorage, where the length of this particular inlet is um, just the right, pretty much just the right length that a wave from one end takes about six hours to move from one end to the other end of that arm. And then, of course, six hours to come back. Well, that's about the same time that the tide comes in and out. So the moon and the sun, which are creating the tides of moving water in and out of this bay, are doing it in precisely the same frequency that a wave would want to slosh in and slosh back out again. And what you get is these building bigger and bigger tides. Now, of course, it's not perfect, and then the frequency of the, the forcing function um, changes a bit as the moon and the sun interact in different ways throughout the month. Um, so you don't, it doesn't continue to grow infinitely big. But uh, you get these huge tides in Tarmaganar, and they come in. With these, uh, people ride surfboards along the, the incoming tide. Uh, it's so big. Now, the 0.42 here isn't quite right. It's actually um, closer, I think, to 0.43. My, my stopwatch isn't completely accurate. My timing is to start and stop times weren't perfect. But uh, we were pretty close to resonance. But I think that you'll see over time, uh, this video, um, I may have to speed it up, um, that this will actually die back down uh, to zero again. Another place that we see this is in electrical circuits, this phenomena, and I will make another video with um, electrical circuits and show you this vibration and the resonance that can happen when you have a forcing function. So at this point, I'm just going to let it go for a little bit and watch to see that we are not quite on the point of resonance. At this stage, it is definitely getting smaller, and I'm pretty sure it should come to a complete stop here momentarily, and then it will start to increase again. So there, here we, are we there yet? Oh, there it is. Yes, we made it. So we weren't quite on resonance, but you can see that that took uh, quite a while. I'll have to admit, that's probably the first time I've danced on a video before, but... Uh, Fortunately, you couldn't see what my legs were doing. 